Welcome to Voice Bootcamp, a global name in unified communication. Hi, my name is Faisal Khan, CEO and founder of Voice Bootcamp Incorporation. In this series of do-it-yourself self-study kit for Cisco Unified Customer Voice Portal, aka CVP deployment, I'm going to give you an overview about the CVP platform. Now, the agenda for this particular chapter is to focus on what is CVP, uh, the core function of the CVP solutions. We're going to talk about the VXML, uh, what, what VXML is, and the advantage of running CVP over UCCX as an IPIVR. Now, so what is CVP or Unified Customer Voice Portal? Well, CVP is basically a web-based platform that provides a career class interactive voice response. Now, IVR is not a something that a new concept or invented by Cisco. IVR has been around for long, longer than even Cisco existed. So what uh, IVR really does, it provides interactive voice response with a customer where a machine or a computer-based system will communicate with the customer by uh, announcing predefined recorded messages and the customer will respond using either uh, DTMF touchstone on the phone or by numbers or by uh, actually commanding the platform with an answer by saying it in a speech. Now the uh, computer system uh, has the capability to recognize the uh, sentence or the word the customer is saying and then act upon on based on that. Now that is what CVP does. CVP can also provide IP switching service. For example, it can do SIP-based call routing. Um, you can have point A sending calls to point B via the CVP uh, server. Now, if you ever call your uh, banking, telephone banking, or if you ever call your uh, service provider to make changes to your system, you will notice that some service provider these days, what they do, they have a portion of their call center that allows you to make your own change. That is called uh, self-service application. Now, in CVP, we can use CVP to create that self-service application, which is often known as IVR application. Now, IVR application include voice or video interaction. Now, of course, up until more uh, lately, uh, most of the IVR-based applications used to be a voice, but uh, later, uh, sooner. Uh, well, late, uh, few companies are moving toward a video-based interaction, meaning you go to their website, you click on support, and then suddenly you have this agent being answered using a web client, and you get to see the person, and you're having a uh, video call or communication with them. So this is called video ba uh, chatting or video-based interaction. Now, the whole CVP server is actually based on voice XML. A voice XML happens to be... Uh, a VX a language that is used to create an IVR based application. Now IVR application can control audio input such as from the user entering the input or send out an output you know after you take the input you process it then you send out a result back to the client. It can do a presentation logic and call, call flow, uh, telephony connections and error handling. It enables the VXML to receive and report IVR events and interface with the customer data component, database component if needed. Now this is a typical environment where CVP is involved. So as you can see the center device is CVP. A CVP can communicate with a SIP proxy server for receiving and sending calls. Uh, it can act as ingress gateway as well as egress gateway. It communicates with VXML to process VXML application by asking the VXML gateway to execute certain script that is residing on a VXML server. Now, VXML server and CVP server call server could be on the same server. Uh, well, not necessarily the same server anymore. Uh, well, yeah, it is same server. A call server uh, consists of VXML. So, VX v CVP and VXML server could be the same server but the gateway has to be either a Cisco iOS router or a visual voice router, uh, browser. Now CVP can communicate with ICM or contact center enterprise using a VRUPG and it uses a protocol known as GED125. Uh, these are some important topics for you to note it down because in the interview it might ask you that what protocol does CVP use to communicate with ICM. 
or that would be GED125 via the VRUPG. Now the protocol between the VRUPG and ICM is called DMP. Now, so the core function of CVP is to provide 100% IP-based IVR services. It also provides queuing treatment. That means when an agent is not available, with the help of ICM or contact center enterprise, it can queue the call. And while it's queuing the call, it can announce, well, uh, play music. It can uh, let the customer know that they're waiting uh, in a queue. Uh, it can uh, interact with the customer by asking questions and taking an answer. Now, in order for you to queue the call, you must use Cisco Unified Contact Center Enterprise. Now, CVP can, uh, as I said earlier, the CVP is a call switching. That means using a SIP protocol, you can send calls from point A to point B using the CVP server. Now, it can provide VRU reporting, VXML custom application development, and serviceability enhancement. VXML or voice XML. So what is a voice XML? Well, think about web page. Web page is written in HTML, right? So HTML is a markup language that a web browser understand and execute by contacting a web, uh, web uh, server. Well, VXML is very similar markup language, but is based on XML coding or structure. A VXML uh, language is designed for creating audio dialogue and digitized audio recognition of a speech or dual uh, uh, dual tone multi-frequency DTMF key input, recording of a spoken input, which is text-to-speech or spe spe advanced speech recognition. Uh, it is easy to use for simple interaction and VXML is very is an open standard uh, protocol or uh, program that uh, pretty much most of the developer who get who are involved with IVR based application probably already knows how to could program it. Now, VXML program was rendered uh, by is rendered or executed by a browser, some some type of browser, and that browser could be an iOS gateway, 2800 series or 2900 series, or a Visual Voice browser, which is basically replace things like I think it's going to be replacing the iOS gateway into a virtual machine. Now, VXML server could be separate server. Um, it will communicate with a VXML gateway, but instruction uh, will be sent from the CVP server to the VXML gateway. VXML gateway will then contact VXML server for further processing. And when there are prompts involved, like audio file or grammar, grammatical file, um, files involved, VXML server will communicate with media server where all your audio prompts are located. Now, uh, CVP has two type of component, native component, which are built into the CVP server and non-native component that are around the CVP server that works with CVP to complete their call. First of all, you have a call server. Now, call server consists of uh, VXML server, media server, Sorry, um, call server, VXML server, media server, call studio, reporting server, and operation console. These are the six native component of CVP. Then you have a non-native component, which is Cisco Voice uh, Ingress Gateway, uh, external gateway that is used to receive calls. You have Voice XML Gateway acting as a uh, VXML browser. Egress gateway for another Cisco router can act as uh, outbound call, or you can use the same router for ingress and uh, egress. You have video endpoint for video uh, based uh, contact center. You have call manager that act as a call control device for all the agent where all the agents may be registered to or where the call is coming through. Uh, intelligence center for reporting purposes. And then you have contact center enterprise for queuing purposes. SIP proxy server could be used to uh, provide load balancing or uh, redundancy uh, or routing calls to appropriate uh, destination. DNS server are used active uh, because of the active directory. Load balancer can be used to distribute call to multiple media server for load balancing purposes. 
Now, if you are sending calls over a SIP trunk to service provider, you may want to use the SCO Unified Border Element. Video media server for video files and you have a text to speech server or automatic speech recognition from a third party that can convert your audio into text or vice versa. Now, the CVP main component or core component, there are few components that can work together as a one component. For example, when I say CVP server, that CVP server has call server, which is your call control, VXML server for VXML uh, execution of uh, IVR script, media server, which is hosting your prompt and uh, serve, uh, audio files. So these three are combined are known as CVP server. Now call studio, which is another core is basically an IDE or a compiler which allows you to create your application, often known as script editor. Now it is based on Eclipse framework, so if you're familiar with the Java Eclipse programming, uh, this will be much more uh, familiar with you when you're working with Call Studio. Now one of the advantage of Call Studio though, it is that it's drag and drop. So basically from a, you drag from a left menu and into the script, make some parameters and you're pretty much done with that you don't have to do advanced java or c sharp or net uh, net programming it's mostly drag and drop but it does give you capability to write very complex pro uh, program now call studio can also provide option to insert vendor supply or custom develop plugin that enable the application to interact with each other in the service network so a uh, so, uh, third party vendor could provide you a predefined program that you can import it into your project as a plugin. Of course, you gotta follow the software development kit to understand how to pass parameter between them. Now Call Studio is basically an offline tool. You will uh, configure it on your, um, let's say uh, laptop. You can use it on your laptop, desktop when it's offline. And at some point, you will then uh, connect to VXML server to develop, deliver the compiled application for further uh, for to run it in the CVP engine. Now, Call Studio licenses are associated with the MAC address of the machine where it is running. Now, Reporting Server, which is a Windows server that hosts the IBM Informix Dynamic Server uh, Dynamic Server database, which is for manage for the management system, it provides consolidated historical reporting for distributed self-service deployment. Database schema is available by uh, from Cisco, uh, so that you can uh, create more advanced reporting, or you can customize it if you need to. Schema is fully published so the customer can develop their own custom report based on that schema. Now, reporting server does receive reports from IVR service, SIP service if used, and VXML server. Now, reporting server does depend on the call server to receive call records, so you gotta make sure the call server is running if the reporting server is to receive any records at all. Now, the standalone VXML server deployment, uh, which is basically no contact center enterprise involved, uh, one call server is needed per reporting server. Now, reporting server and the call server uh, must be, uh, sorry, VXML server and uh, call server must be local because the reporting server over the WAN is not supported. You can run multiple reporting server, place them at each site, when call server and VXML server exist at that multiple locations as well. Uh, it does not perform any database administration, maintenance activities such as backup or purging. Now one of the advantage of using CVC, uh, CVP as an IPR, uh, IP based IVR platform over UCCX is that you don't need call manager for CVP to work, where UCCX you do need to have call manager. Uh, you can use advanced Java programming within the CVP. It's a highly customizable solution because you can create your own plugin and import it into your project. And it is scalable beyond 40, 400 agent that UCCX is limited to. So yeah, so that's pretty much the overview of our CVP server. I will end our lecture at this stage for now, for this chapter.
and I will see you in chapter 2.